light the first candle of the Advent wreath. This is the candle of hope. With Christians around the world, we use this light to help us prepare our hearts and our minds for the coming Son of God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. May we receive God's light as we hear the words of the prophet Isaiah in Isaiah 9, verse 2. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. Let's pray. Lord, as we look to the birth of Jesus, grant that the light of your love for us will help us to become lights in the lives of those around us. Prepare our hearts for the joy and the gladness of your coming, for Jesus is our hope. Amen. Now please stay tuned for a message of hope. Hello everyone, season's greetings, happy holiday, and Merry Christmas. My name is Pastor Neil. Today, we're going to be looking at hope, the promise hope. We can look at the history of Christmas, but we can't ignore where it all began. It might not be where you think it began. Actually, we needed hope way before Christ was born. It goes back in Genesis, even beyond the creation. It all began in heaven. You see, in heaven, there was a great war between Satan and God and his angels. And Satan tried his best to convince the rest of the angels that God is unfair. He tried to tell the other angels, oh, why should we listen to him? All he does is tell us what to do. But yet we know that Lucifer, Satan's other name, he decided that he wanted to be greater than God. And so sadly, the war continued, but at the end, they were banished from heaven. Which brings us to the next part. God again wanted to create. He wanted to spread His love through creation. And so He decided to create a perfect world. A world where there would be no sin, no sorrow, and pain. And now, of course, we know that as a result of Lucifer being banished, he was sent down to what we call and know now as Earth. And so here he was, during the creation of Adam and Eve, during the creation week. But he was not happy where he was. He wanted to bring down even God's creation of man, God's creation of the animals, God's creation of this world. And so he deceptively became a snake and tricked Eve into biting that fruit, that forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And as a result, Adam too partook of the fruit. And so when God, who used to walk among them, approached them and said, what has happened here? Did I not tell you not to eat from this tree? And yet the woman, she blamed the snake. And of course, Adam blamed Eve. And then of course, God said, well, because you have done this snake, I curse you to crawl on the ground. And of course, the curse didn't end there. We found out that Eve and Adam would also partake in this curse. You can find more details about that in Genesis chapter 3. So then it brings us to the next part of this ongoing need for the promised hope. As a result of sin entering this world throughout the generations and generations and generations from Adam to Abraham to Jacob to Isaac to the birth of Jesus Christ, there would be pain, there would be sorrow, there would be times in which God's people would be in prison. And of course, God's people would cry out and say, Lord, Lord, have you forgotten us? But yet, this is the reason why we need the promised hope. God saw and was always there and heard their cries. There are many instances, many amazing stories of how God gave hope to his people. Every time they were captured, he promised that he would deliver them. For example, 
during the time of Moses and how the Israelites were slaves. And then yet again, during the time of Daniel, after they had been under the uh, control of the Babylonians, they would then receive hope. They would be freed. But as we know, the story doesn't end there. God loves us so much that He did not want this world to suffer. And so He made a promise. The promise was that He would send His only begotten Son. I want to tell you another illustration real quick of how much God loves us. God loves us so much that in the courtyard of heaven, there before man fell, God was in a panic. He saw that Eve had eaten of the fruit and now man was doomed. And so in the courtyard, he was calling for his angels. Who am I going to send? Who am I going to send? Which angel will come and help my creation? So one angel said, oh God, choose me. Father, choose me. I can be there in two minutes. So then another angel said, no, no, God, he's too slow. I can be there in one minute. But God said, well, that's still too slow. Where's Gabriel? I need Gabriel. And Gabriel said, don't worry, Father. I can be there in 30 seconds. Yet God said, no, still, that is too slow. Where is my son? Where is my son, Michael? Where is my son, Jesus? And down on earth, he heard a voice. And it was Jesus saying, Father, don't worry. I'm already here. Let us have the hope of salvation and let us plan this out. And so that's what Christ did when he was born on Christmas Day. On that time, you know, if we go back in Luke chapter 2, the witness of the shepherds as they were among Uh, The people at night, you know, they were wondering, well, what else can we do tonight? But yet a big glow came out in the sky and the angels sent a wonderful message that a Savior would be born. And you could find the Savior wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And so the shepherd said, well, we should go. We should check this promised Messiah, this promised Savior. You have to understand, when they left the fields, they were leaving their livelihood. You got to understand that shepherds weren't really anything back then other than giving the annual sacrifice. People would go and get a lamb or a sheep for the annual sacrifice. You also have to understand that shepherds had a big job. They had to go and find the lost sheep. And that was dangerous at times. But yet the angels appeared to the shepherds to bring this amazing news. And so the angel said to the shepherds, Glory to God in the highest, and earth peace, goodwill toward men. So then the angels appeared to the shepherds. The angels guided them to where they could see the Savior, Christ, would be born. And they ran and they looked throughout the town of Bethlehem to see where this promised Savior is, to see Christ to be born, because that was God's plan all along. That is the promised hope that we have. And this promised hope the shepherds would see as a fulfillment of prophecy, as a fulfillment of the promise that God has given. And so, what it would be like to be the shepherds, to see the promised hope, Jesus Christ being born. And we know that because of Christ being born, we have a Savior. He was and is the Savior. When He was here, He did many things. But without His birth, without the promise of God, we would not have that hope. And so, as you're enjoying your time during this time of giving, greeting, and singing, remember that the promised hope is Jesus Christ that was born in a manger. And that through Jesus Christ, we are saved, we are redeemed. And throughout His life, He has proven and shown that He is 
the promised hope. God bless and take care.